guys, it's me, Stormy, and we are going to talk about the new moon partial solar eclipse we've got coming August 11th. This one is going to be happening at 18 degrees of Leo in conjunction with Mercury. Got some aspects that are challenging both Jupiter and Pluto. And this particular um, eclipse is also going to be in conjunction with asteroid Pallas. So traditionally, you guys know I don't speak too, too often about the asteroids unless they happen to be in some kind of tight conjunction with one of the aspects we are studying. And Pallas, I think, brings a lot of significance to the world that we're in right now and some world things that we may see coming up at this particular um, solar eclipse. So I really want to bring that in and talk about that. Now, before we jump in and really talk about the full astrology um, of what's going on this month, which you guys can see, and I'll be showing you on the placements and all of that good stuff. So hopefully it looks very, very clear. Um, but before we do that, I do want to discuss a couple things just to make sure everybody knows that we're all on the same page. So if you've never been to my channel or you're just starting to study or you just didn't know, let's talk about what a solar eclipse is. What does it mean? Now, first of all, a solar eclipse is still our new moon for the month. And at the new moon, this is a place of beginnings. We plant these seeds of intention for beginning. We don't know how it's going to unfold, but we plant them here and we give space and time for them to unfold. That's what we do at a new moon. Now, a solar eclipse, like I said, is that that new moon cycle time. So the moon is passing between the earth and the sun. That's what's happening. However, with a solar eclipse, this is a lot more intense. The new beginning can take six months. The moon actually darkens the sun out a little bit. So it's kind of like, hold on, there's a little mini reset or there may be a little bit of eclipsing happening in the new beginning that's coming along. It may not be as straightforward or you may not even know that it's coming. And for many, many people, I'm going to tell you, I think the last solar eclipse that we had in Cancer, people were like, nothing happened. And it did. Things were happening. You just might not have been completely aware of it. Okay. So this particular eclipse we're going to have here on August 11th is a partial because it doesn't fully blot out the sun, right? So most of the sun is still going to be able to be seen, but it is still the representative, you guys, of the ending of a cycle and beginning of another one. Now, what you can see here in the chart that's important, I think, to understand is that the aspect that's actually happening um, when we're having a new moon and at the solar eclipse is that the sun and the moon are in conjunction. So they're holding hands here. They're working together, right? And this is this is the sun and this is the moon. These are our opposite energies, our wants and our needs, and they're together, working together right now. So what this means is that the sky is the limits. You know what I mean? You can really take on and establish something new here because everything's possible. Your wants and your needs are not going in opposite directions. They're working together to say, this is what we need for vitality and security. So at this new beginning energy, if you're putting yourself or moving yourself um, into a strong position, you can shed some things that are stopping you from getting where you're going, and you can also begin to develop some new behaviors to get you where you want to go. So there's some clarity that comes around it, you know? But what it is, is the time to have a clean slate, a fresh start. I think at a solar eclipse or any new moon piece of the cycle, it's a phenomenal time. Write it down. Get pen to paper. What's this new beginning you want? What do you want this to look like going forward, right? Because from the time of the solar eclipse, really through the next six months, you'll watch things develop. But from the time of this new moon energy, um, to the 26th of the month, when we get to our full moon, you're going to be able to watch some things develop, right? It's going to be really great. Now, the other thing I will tell you to pay attention to in this timing is what were the seeds of intention that you set or what were the things that even if you weren't completely conscious of them at that time, you were kind of thinking about at the July 12th solar eclipse, right? What was ending your world um, from your world on the July 27th eclipse? Because from that eclipse moving forward, we're seeing the patterns. They're little check-in points that things are in fact happening. They are happening, okay? Now, because I don't 
often talk about it. I do want to just give a little fill in on what, why does polis matter this time, okay? Polis, or called polis Athena, and I'm not getting into the full lesson of that. I have that video up on this channel, so feel free to check it out. But polis is about strategy, right? Strategy, pattern, um, there's a lot of wisdom that comes with Paulus, but Paulus, when I think about her, is this energy of, it's a very tomboy kind of energy, right? Or what we consider tomboy energy. It is this energy of a very, very strong female, a very strong feminine energy that is also gorgeous, right? Just, mm, yes, beautiful, right? So it's this interesting energy that lies there between a very powerful um, masculine energy and a female energy who's built for war, sex, and strategy, right? War, power, strategy. So it's a very, it's a really nice asteroid to learn a lot about and to work with. Paulus also has a lot to do with the father-daughter relationships, right? Or that feminine character development from um, that fathering energy, which is interesting because what it's helped Paulus develop and helps us develop is this place where we're looking for the truth, right? We're looking for the truth of the maturity in it. What's the truth here? And we need to also gather all of the truth, gather the pattern, gather the details, gather the information before we take an action, right? So really when we watch Paulus and how she works, um, it's a tougher energy, right? But she's also wise enough to say, wait a minute, before I take some action, I need to know everything that's going on. And Paulus is also going to be an energy that does not necessarily excite violence unless it is the last resort. Why is that important at this moon? Based on our world here and what's going on, this energy being in conjunction with this eclipse energy, a fresh start, a new beginning, could bring politics to the table. And it could bring information on feminine topics. I just cringe a little bit, you guys, to use the word or the, the, the phrase feminism. I just, I think it has changed from what it used to mean. So, and I wish to be 0% political or unpolitically correct in this video as it goes, but these are issues we may see coming on the rise again. There could be conversations and that's important because it looks a little bit like it could be in the sense of of a power struggle and also in people changing their minds and their views on that. And I think that's important to understand because astrology is not just personal. Our world gets involved as well, okay? All right, so let's talk about this a little bit and then I will break down the actual astrology for you guys and watch the chart. I'll be doing my best to point out where everything's at, okay? So eclipse season has happened to us and this is gonna be the end of the eclipse season as we get here to the 11th, right? But I really want to focus a little bit more in on these last three eclipses that we've had and how they have worked together. So we had our first partial eclipse on July 12th, right? We had the second lunar eclipse that happened in July as well, right? Now we have this last, which will end our eclipse season energy with this partial solar eclipse. So that is a lot. That is a lot. We have been experiencing solar lunar solar energy for a while, and it can be a little bit disorienting. It can throw you off just a little bit, right? Now, what's interesting to focus on at this particular eclipse, considering all of those things, is that a solar eclipse, like I said, is that new beginning. But what it creates within us usually is an internal shift that later down the road, we can see in an external way right? Because the eclipse season as a whole is going to create an internal transformation. It will. It's going to shake some things up for us, shake us out of our comfort zones, right? Now, during that solar eclipse in July, we processed some things. We had some shakeups, some new beginnings were put there, right? The lunar eclipse offered us a chance to not only rethink some things we've been thinking, some behavior, some ideas, some places in our lives to get a new perspective on it, but also to process and to get prepared for what's coming in this last solar eclipse. 
okay? So we have been in the setup of energy to get us ready for this one, okay? Like I said, you guys, even if you feel like nothing happened for me at that July eclipse, I don't know, I didn't feel it, I didn't see it, it did. It did. So when we have this lunar eclipse, what's going to happen is, yes, it could be associated with having strong emotional reactions and things like that. But what it's going to prompt us to do is to look at individuality, look at where we need to resolve things in our world. The information has come to us. We've been in a high retrograde time, plus we've had these eclipses. Um, it's going to be asking us to spend some time thinking about how we can help people around us. It may be asking us to think about where we need more help, right? Where do you need to ask for some help? Where do you need to actually be prepared after the solar eclipse to take action to move something forward? So if you've been considering making that career change or you've had a partner you wanna get more serious with or you're thinking you wanna cut it off with them, as we get to this solar eclipse and beyond, you may be ready to do that. Now, here's the good news. For surviving eclipse season, what's going to happen is that no matter what the shakeup has been, you're going to come out on the other side of this in the next six months completely realigned. You may be thinking, oh my God, is it over yet? I promise you it is all unfolding to get you prepared for these changes that kind of come full circle. And the circle brings an end to a timing in your life where you're getting ready to definitely move something forward. So it's actually just a gorgeous energy, you guys. This ends the eclipse season. Let's cheer, okay? All right, let's talk about the actual astrology that we see here. So what we've got going on is we see Mercury, first of all, in a conjunction with this eclipse. Now, Mercury at this particular eclipse time um, has is still in its shadow time, right? It's not retrograde anymore, but it's still in the shadow period. So he's still a little hazy from his retrograde trip. But what this is going to encourage with Mercury being that planet of thinking, communication, decision making, business, um, you know, Mercury is very strategic. It's very savvy. And so is Paul. So we've got strategic, savvy, intelligent energy happening here. So it means it's going to make you, it's going to make you stop and think. It's going to put you in a position to need to make some um, decisions at this time, right? It's going to put you in a position. Okay, so what we see first is Mercury in conjunction with this solar eclipse. Also, we've got asteroid Pallas in conjunction here, but Mercury is retrograde at this time. So first of all, what the energies mean is that it's going to make us stop and think. You're going to have to stop, think, make some different decisions, think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Now, with Mercury retrograde, of course, signing new contracts, making new deals, trying to make these huge life decisions, they're slowed down. They feel actually a little bit complicated. It may even feel like you're trying to just have a thought or make a decision or make a plan for something and it's just not working out and that's because Mercury is retrograde. Instead, what that Mercury retrograde is asking you to do is to think back. Think about where you're at. What needs the reevaluation? What needs the re-edit? Especially, remember, you're reevaluating, re-editing, getting the truth about the matter so that you can launch forward. This is about getting you ready for your launch forward. So what information do you not have right now that you could be gathering the details of to help you as you get ready to launch when this eclipse season is over, right? Now the solar eclipse as we see here as well is also in a square to Jupiter and that means that Mercury here is also in a square to Jupiter as well. But the eclipse sitting in this square to Jupiter, um, it's, it's interesting because it can actually be um, kind, of, kind of optimistic, honestly. Um, what I would say to you is that don't be too extra, right? 
<laughs> in the way that you're expressing yourself, in the way that you're putting yourself out there, don't be too extra, which means don't take on a whole bunch of projects. You're gonna waste your energy doing it that way. Focus your energy on a couple things that really have your attention. I would also tell you to be mindful with your um, finances if you can, because this is a time where you just the opportunity to go to the extras, whether it's overeating, over drinking, over spending, um, this is an energy that could really spark you in a position where you're doing a little bit too much. So keep that in mind, okay? Now, with Mercury in a square to that Jupiter, um, the fact is that this is a debating energy, right? Mercury's retrogrades and things from the past, statements people have made, politicians are definitely going to be in the hot seat, um, things that they've said in the past, um, information. Jupiter is still in Scorpio, so secrets from the past, these are going to continue to come up, right? And what it also means for the rest of us is we need to be mindful with our words. Do not come at the world being arrogant. This is not a good energy for you to do that. It's the kind of energy that makes you think that you are just hot tacos. And really, you maybe are hot tacos, but you think you're more hot taco than you think. You know what I mean? So that's why I say during the reevaluation time, find out the truth. What do you really have going on? What tools are really in your toolkit to help you jump forward, okay? Now, the other harsh aspect that we see is this solar eclipse being in a quincunx to Pluto. A quincunx is a stuck energy. So here we are at the solar eclipse trying to have this new beginning, this course correction. We're getting started on this intense and awesome new journey or getting ready for it, right? But in an opposition to Pluto, what's having to happen is that um, you may be running into people, places, and things that are trying to be in a power struggle with you, right? Or you're in a power struggle with them, right? It's almost an energy kind of, of crisis. You are at a place where you've got to make some serious decisions, but they've got to be based on shifting you into the best position of power because if you want to have something different, if you want to have something better for yourself, you have got to come at it from a different direction. A piece of you has to die off so that something else can live. Now, this is a place too where this is an energy of life and vitality and it's stuck in, in how exactly to transform, which creates a natural imbalance, right? So there could be a tension that's here, right? There could be the blame game happening for you and you've got to shift that out of the way and find your power, your seat of power so that you can move it forward. Now, out in the world, I have told you politics, I think really become involved this week. And this could be, you know, Jupiter's still in Scorpio. We're going to keep seeing things about sexual misconduct. That's going to keep coming up. Abuses of power, all of these things. This, this, the secrets are going to continue to be um, exposed and things like that. But because Pluto being an outer planet as well is really about um, corporations, um, large movements of things, that we could see a fair amount of issues where there is just tension between what we do in our social movements. How do we make things better for us and for other people? How does everybody win here? What's the shift that's happening globally with our feminine energy, with our different political parties, with all of these different things? They're going to come to the surface, right? Because there's an energy of domination that is definitely, definitely on the table. So with that energy of dominance kind of surging, it is of course gonna put us in a position with our political leaders, with our national leaders and things like that, where there are a lot of conversations about control and power. And I think one of the conversations ends up looking a little bit like, what do you have the power to do? You don't have the power to do that. Um, it's And it's, I think, comes on, on all sides really truly. Now, the other side of that that I think about is how much conversation of, male and female is actually still swirling around this attitude about male and female conversations and discussions, the belief and attitudes around male and female things. I mean, it's really going to be something that I feel like as we get to this um, solar eclipse and we move forward, there's going to be a lot of um, perspective shift. There's going to be, um, there's just a lot of 
courage and shifting that comes around this. But ultimately, I think what the idea here is to find the truth, to find the joy in all of these things, but it doesn't necessarily come out of a space of, of ease. It comes out of a lot of thinking, a lot of debate, a lot of controversy. But then on the other side, remember, the eclipse is still happening in Leo energy. So for all of us, wherever the debate, the domination, the, the change is coming from, we're ultimately moving towards the idea of what's your greatest joy. Where do we have the greatest joy? Where do we have the greatest balance and self-confidence and success in what we're doing in our lives, right? So I really look forward to seeing how this plays out in the world. It has really truly only been through the astrology this year that I have become a lot more interested in watching and interpreting political climate and things like that. That's a very big shift that has come for me and getting the courage to maybe talk a little bit about those things and finding out how to do those neutrally. Um, and how it also then applies to the individual lives of people as we're moving, you know, moving moving new plans to the forefront of what each of us wants for our future, the old behaviors we're shedding and things like that. New, new incentive to make new progress in our lives, you guys. So I look forward to seeing um, what happens and what shifts for you at this solar eclipse, the beginnings that come for you. I'm also looking forward to seeing how this plays out in the world as we continue to interpret these things and the new cycle of life and the new cycle of conversation that's coming as well. So please keep me posted on what you're feeling like the impacts are. What have you seen between um, the different eclipses? What's manifesting for you? So let me know in the comment section down below. Of course, if you're looking forward to moving something forward, I have a special going in um, August only and only at the link that is in the description box below of this video only where we can sit down for an hour and get your post eclipse planning done to help you move forward really successfully. So I look forward to interacting with you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and we will see what happens, right? All right, guys, I love you. Bye.